New questions this morning about the call made to 911 requesting an ambulance to Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's home on New Year's Day. In the call, the aide asked the emergency service to be, quote, discreet. Listen. Can I ask, like, can the ambulance not show up with lights and sirens? Um, we're trying to mm -hmm. remain a, a little subtle. Yeah, I understand. Sure. Um, yeah, usually when they turn into a residential neighborhood, they'll turn them off. Is he reporting any chest pain at all? No. Okay. Did he pass out or does he feel like he's going to pass out? Uh, no. Okay. And like you said, he's, he's awake, he's alert and oriented, he's not confused or anything like that, correct? Correct. Austin was admitted to Walter Reed Hospital on January 1st. It was later discovered President Biden, the White House, and Congress were not notified until several days later. A review is underway into the handling of the situation. Joining us now, former Defense, Defense Secretary under Trump, Mark Esper. We want to talk to you about a lot in, in the Middle East, obviously, but just given this news, given what CNN obtained here, you held this position, right? If this were you while you were serving as Defense Secretary, what do you make of, of that, asking his aides, asking for the ambulance to be discreet when it came to his home, given the broader context that not only did the American public not know for days that he was in the intensive care unit, the president didn't know, his own deputy didn't know? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm, we're glad to hear that uh, Secretary Austin is on the mend and he's back home, continuing his recovery. Um, well, look, I, I think it's well known that Secretary Austin is a very private and personal man. Uh, clearly, his staff knew this as well. And whether or not he told them to do so, this is this is how staff acts on your behalf. And they they try and enhance that. They try and uh, meet the needs, the expectations of, of the boss. And so that's something you have to be very careful of in these roles. And and, um, and, and so this is clearly what has compounded, you know, the, the, the troubles, the initial not notif notifying of uh, elective surgery, then uh, going into the hospital, then a continuing uh, staff not being uh, notified, notified, let alone the president not being uh, notified. So this is kind of the, the 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 culture, if you will, that has been built up around him. That uh, you know clearly he recognized, took responsibility for, and, and said he's going to address. Turning to what is happening and, and the broader conflict in the in the Middle East, we've now seen three different. U.S. strikes against uh, Houthi targets in the, just the last week or so, responding to weeks of drone attacks from them and missiles fired at U.S. assets, at commercial ships in the Red Sea. Um, we've even seen U.S. service members injured, one at least one critically. Do you believe that this strategy is now the right one? Right, The, the U.S. had said, if you cross this line, we're going to respond. There, the, there was a line crossed. And now the question is, should there be more strikes like this from the U.S., what will it achieve? U.S., what will it achieve? Well, first of all, you can't state something and then not follow up on it. It, it shows lack of resolve and weakness. Uh, secondly, I, I thought the strikes, while good, were long overdue. I, I don't think you can allow a terrorist group like the Houthis to uh, strike commercial shipping, threaten United States Navy warships with impunity. So I think it was the right thing to do. Our goal ultimately is deterrence. They are not yet deterred. Um, I think when the Pentagon announced the strikes last week, they said the aim was to degrade and disrupt the Houthis' ability to conduct such strikes. I believe they've, they've done some of that, but clearly a, a good chunk of their capacity remains, and I think we should continue doing so until we, uh, it, you know, completely degrade their capability to do it or ultimately achieve uh, deterrence. Uh, I, I would argue that we should go after their command and control sites as well, okay. uh, and, and that will also add to it. But I, I think this is going to take a, a while, unfortunately, until we get them to stop uh, commercial shipping. And, and look, the, the fact is, uh, people will argue, well, we just shouldn't do it. We can't do it. And my view is, what's the option? You just can't allow 12% of uh, commercial trade, 30% of container traffic to get disrupted through this vital uh, uh, strait. And the economic harm it'll do around the world is, um, you, you know, can be measured in dollars and, and time. Yeah, for, for sure. I want to show you this new uh, video of Houthis dancing on the deck of the Galaxy Leader ship in the Red Sea, the same ship Houthi rebels seized at the end of last year. When you talk about deterrence, again, the question is, how do you deter that? I mean, the reason that they are carrying this out, they're saying, is because of the U.S. support for Israel in its a war against Hamas. And that support is not going to wane. So do you believe that what these Houthi rebels about to be declared, you know, terrorist organization by the Biden administration can be deterred? Can be deterred? 
Well, we don't know, but we have to try, right? Uh, <laughs> they certainly have an appetite for conflict with the United States. It's part of their philosophy, if you will. They subscribe to the sh same uh, uh, Shia view of the United States and Israel that uh, Iran does, mm -hmm. you know, death to Israel, death to Iran. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, death to the United States. But look, at the end of the day, I've, I've said this repeatedly, it, Iran is, is supplying, supporting, inspiring, uh, funding all these activities, whether it's the Houthis in, in southern Yemen or in Yemen, or Hezbollah, Hamas, the Shia militia groups in Iraq, uh, you name it. So, uh, you know, we have to get together the Western democracies and the Arab states, quite frankly, and figure out a plan to ultimately deal with Iran to staunch these flows of weapons and materiel and funding going into these countries, or else this is just going to continue. The cycle of violence and terrorism will go on for, uh, what, another four decades? And that's what we're up against. Quickly, the Biden administration is about to redesignate re Houthis as a specially designated global terrorist entity, not specifically a foreign terrorist organization. But this is, a, this is something that they rescinded that the Trump administration had put in place right at the end. I think it was January 11th, and then the Biden administration came in, undid that. Now they're redoing it. Why does it matter? What difference will it make? Well, I think it makes a difference because it'll apply a certain amount of sanctions on the Houthis, you know, the ability for the United States to, to trade with them, to deal with them. It'll place other constraints as well. I, I think it was a mistake to withdraw the sanctions um, in 2021. I understand why they thought that might work. But the other part of this is that while they designated one set of sanctions, especially designated global terrorist, uh, they, they're not, they, the Biden administration, are not applying the foreign terrorist organization yeah. uh, sanctions, which are st far stiffer. They have criminal penalties. And the concern is it might somehow prevent or or uh, scare off humanitarian groups, humanitarian aid going into the people of Yemen. It seems to me that we can find a way to kind of carve that out while still applying the full weight of U.S. sanctions on the Houthis. And by the way, I don't think U.S. sanctions are sufficient. We should have global sanctions. Certainly the Western democracies and others apply sanctions on the Houthis to kind of stop this uh, bad behavior from them and uh, and to uh, curtail their, their attacks on the Red Sea shipping. The reason the Biden administration rescinded that uh, was because they thought it would hamper getting aid into Yemen. But as you point out, conditions have certainly changed a lot since then. Secretary Esper, thanks very much.